What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to share a video with you that is available for free in my IG Growth Accelerator training that goes over how to set up your GA4 account and also how to set up Google Tag Manager events that are really going to help you guys understand and be able to read the data that Google Analytics is giving you. So with that said, I'm going to cut it over back to that video. What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your GA4 account. For those of you who don't know, um, Google for a long time has been using Universal Analytics and starting I think July 1st, 2023, they're going to be getting rid of Universal Analytics. So if you use Google Analytics, it's really important that you switch to GA4 account. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Um, I switched to website providers, so I actually have to set this up on on my Kajabi website. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. So if you are with Kajabi, then this is gonna be a little bit more helpful. Um, but if not, the process for setting up Google Analytics on your website provider might look a little different, but if you're using something like Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, any of those guys, it's usually pretty easy to do and or you can actually contact their um, customer support and they'll usually help you uh, with that or they'll do it for you. So um, with that said, let's get started. Okay, so if you do not have a Google Analytics account at all, what you're going to do is you're literally going to type in Google Analytics and you're going to sign in. Okay, um, so for me, I already have a Google Analytics account and what I'm interested in doing is creating a new property. So if you need to create an account, you would start here, but if you already have an account, all you have to do is click Create Property. You'll notice for Google Analytics 4, there's no View section here. So that's um, a big difference that people notice right away is Universal Analytics has a account, property, view. GA4 just has account and then property. Okay, so we're going to click on property and we're going to type in property name. So I'm going to put in my business name and then I'm going to mention that this is for Kajabi. And then you want to put in your time zone. And so I charge in US dollars. So I'm just going to leave that there. So once you have this information set up, you're going to notice the show advanced options. And so it's going to allow you to create a universal analytics property. But like I said, they're getting rid of this on July 1st. So there's no point. But once you have this information filled out, what you're going to do is you're going to hit next. And then you want to continue filling out the information. So you want to select your industry, and then you want to fill out your business size and then also your intentions for Google Analytics. And then you want to click on create. So now your property is set up and it's going to ask you to start collecting data. So I just want to set this up for my website. You'll also notice that we're setting up your data streams. So data streams is just a fancy way of saying where the data is coming from that Google Analytics is going to be measuring. So you can either do apps or you can do websites. And then what you want to do is you want to add your website. So I'm just putting in Kajabi because I already have a Squarespace account and I didn't name it this way. So I just want to make sure that I can recognize that this is the new website. You want to make sure enhanced measurements is turned on. And then you want to click create stream. So you'll notice here that it says data collection isn't active for your website. This is because I don't have any of the code set up yet. Another big difference that you're going to notice is instead of your universal analytics uh, tracking code, it's going to show up as a measurement ID that looks quite different. This is really important when we set up your Google tag. So some installation instructions are going to pop up if your code isn't installed because it's actually going to try and find where your website website is being hosted or not hosted, but um, which software you're using. So if you're using like Shopify or Wix or Squarespace, um, it's going to try and find out where the domain is connected. So for this one, it can't find it. It still thinks it's on Squarespace. And so you're going to have a, the option to install manually, which is going to be what I'm going to do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this onto uh, my computer and I'm going to go over to Kajabi. And so what I'm going to click on is settings. And something I want to point out really quick here is if you're using platforms like Shopify or Squarespace or Wix or any of those big guys, typically they have a really easy settings feature where you can just go ahead and you can um, turn your Google Analytics on. And then you would add your uh, Google Analytics 
analytics ID. So what you're going to notice, though, is the universal analytics always had a UA in front of it. But now if we look back over to our measurement ID, um, it looks completely different. And because this is set up for universal analytics, it typically won't register. I know I had a huge problem with it on Squarespace. So in that case, you don't want to use like the third party integrations where you just add the measurement ID. What you want to do instead is you want to actually paste this into the header code of your website. So in this case, on Kajabi specifically, it's going to look different depending on where your website is um, or who your website is with. So for me, I'm going to click on site details. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to page scripts and I'm going to paste that tag. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. And so now with a bit of luck, this should be collecting data and be connected now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually set up your Google Tag Manager. Now, I used to resist Google Tag Manager for the longest time. I absolutely hated it. Um, and then I started running into situations where I had to use it for clients. And honestly, it's really hard to screw up Google Tag Manager, and it's a lot easier to diagnose issues. So I'm actually a huge fan of it now, funny enough. Um, so I'm going to show you how to set up a Google Tag Manager, and then we're going to go through how to set up reports and actually collect the data from your uh, Google Analytics, because I know a lot of you guys struggle with that. So let's head over to Google Tag Manager. Literally, all you need to do is go into Google, type in Google Tag Manager, and then click on the link that comes up. So here, I literally just typed in Google Tag Manager, and then there's Google Tag Manager. So what you're going to do is you're going to create an account and then you're going to set up your container. Um, don't get too lost in this. This is kind of like setting up a data stream. Container just means like your website information. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on website if this is for your website and then you're going to hit create. Then you want to accept the policies and service agreement. Then you're going to say yes. And then it's going to give you instructions on how to install the Google Tag Manager. So I'm going to once again paste this or copy this code. I'm going to head back over to Kajabi. And in the page scripts, I'm going to paste it. So once you have your code added, you're just going to hit OK. And now we're going to go set up your tags. So we're going to click over on tags here. And then if you're starting a new account, you're not going to have anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to click new. And I like to name this tag config. And then I like to copy and paste over the measurement ID. So you're going to copy the measurement ID here. And I'm just going to paste it at the top. And then we're going to click on tag configuration. And you're going to click on GA4 configuration. Then it's going to ask you for your measurement ID again. And then you're going to click on triggering and we want to the we want this to trigger on all pages so once you're done there you're going to click on save and this is going to configure your google analytics ga4 and your google tag manager okay what i want you guys to do and this is helpful for setting up your reporting is to actually head over to your website so my website's not done yet but let's go take a look and so you want to figure out what data is going to help you understand what's going on your website. So what you can do is you can actually go through and you can break down different pages. So I probably want to know when people are signing up for my content idea calendar. I also want to know when people are going and visiting um, or going to go make an appointment to have a consult with me. And then I also want to know what people are going over onto my social media management pages and my paid ad pay, uh, management. And then I also want to know what people are reading my blogs, how well those are performing, what topics are people resonating with. And then the other thing that I want to know is what people are signing up for my free training. So your business is going to look different, but typically you're looking at people like, let's say your e-commerce, you want to know what people are purchasing from you um, or reaching your thank, thank you pages or your checkout add to cart, different things like that. And it's really easy to set up in Google Tag Manager and I'm gonna show you how. So let's switch back over to Google Tag Manager. So you're gonna click on new and I want to track blog page views. 
So that's going to be what I named this tag here. And then I'm going to click tag configuration. And this time we're going to set up an event. So let's just head back over to your Google Analytics for a second. We're going to close out of here. So keep in mind, um, when you go and you set up a new data stream, it might take up to 48 hours for you to be able to collect data, uh, which is totally okay. But what we want to do is we want to click on reports. And then what we want to do is we want to click on events. And so your events are going to set up here and something or show up here, sorry. And and something that's super interesting that you could not do with Universal Analytics is in GA4, you can actually tell Google Analytics what you want to track. And so I want them to track blog post views. So this is where my event's going to show up. It might take a few days. Google Analytics says it should take 48 hours. I've actually had some clients where it took closer to 72. So I wouldn't panic if it's not showing up right away. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click on GA4 event. And so now you need to pick which measurement ID. And so that'll be the one that shows up here. If you want to double check it, um, then you can just go back into your Google Analytics uh, GA4 property under data streams and it'll show up there again for you. So what I'm doing here is I'm wanting to set up the event. So I want to track a specific page URL. And so what I'm doing is I'm setting up the event parameters. So the parameter is page underscore URL, and then the value is page URL. If you're not sure what to write, you can literally just click on here and it's going to bring up variables and and the parameters for you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to click on triggering. So the thing is, we don't want to have this trigger on all pages. We want a specific page. So you're going to click on this little plus sign up here and we're going to create a totally new trigger. So I'm going to say blog page views and then I'm going to click on trigger configuration and I'm going to click on page view and I only want this to fire on some pages. I only want this to fire when um, the page URL contains blog. Okay, so the, how I got to that, though, let me explain this is let's say so somebody clicks on this blog post if we look at the url up here sorry my my website's not done so ignore all of this <laughs> so if we look at the url up here you're going to notice that it mentions blog so this is where your site navigation becomes important because if you're not organizing your site properly, it makes it really difficult to do. I'm actually working with a client right now where they didn't org organize their site by blog. So now when you're pulling up the reports, you actually have to go through every single website page individually and you have to actually remove the non-blog pages from the data and the reports. So it just creates a little bit more work. So I definitely recommend that you plan out how your site navigation is done. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to click save and then I'm going to click save again. And so now I'm tracking all of my blog page views and they're going to show up as events in Google Analytics. So keep in mind, Google says this might take at least 48 hours for me, in my experience, it's actually taken longer than that. Um, so don't freak out if nothing shows up right away. Give it some time. So the next thing that people like to create is um, like if somebody adds a product to cart or they visit a specific landing page or a sales page or anything like that, you can also uh, track those by doing the exact same process that we followed here. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to set up an event to track all pages now. So we're going to click on tag configuration and instead of the GA4 configuration, now what we're doing is we're setting up a GA4 event configuration. So for this one, we're once again, we're going to do page URL. And this time we're just going to select all pages. And this is going to set up an event that will track all of our page views and group them together in the event section. So we're going to save this. And now none of this is live on your site until you hit submit. So in order to double check that our configurations and our setup is working properly, what we need to do is make sure we submit this. And I highly recommend you thoroughly describe all the changes you're making in Google Tag Manager. This makes it easier if you have multiple people working on your Google Analytics, then people can understand what changes were made. It also is helpful if something gets shut down or isn't working properly 
you can actually understand what changes were implemented. And then that can give you a bit of direction on where something's not working. So I'm going to say GA4 configuration. And then I'm going to say that we set up um, the GA4 configuration, all page view event, and then the workspace changes are going to show up there. And then we're going to click on publish. So then this little um, summary is going to show up and we can just X out of that. It's also going to show what changes were made again here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to our workspace. And we're going to open the preview button and you're going to type in your website. You're going to click connect. And so this is going to be how we check to make sure that our tags are firing properly. So I'm going to click on the blog article to see if that um, has shown up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to double check our work here. So the tag configuration fired. OK, it says tags fired. And the reason why that fired is because I created a configuration for um, this particular Google Analytics account on this particular website. So that's why that one fired. I also clicked on the blog article, which is why a blog page view fired. It's also all website page views is going to fire on all pages. So that's why that fired as well. So this tells me that all of this is working correctly. And so that's how you confirm that your tags are set up correctly. Something else you can do is you can click on the configure section. Oh, I guess they moved this to admin. That's new. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to click on debug view, and this is telling me if the website is connect or collecting data or not. And so here we can see that it is because it registered as a page view, it registered as user engagement. So you can go and you can click around on your website to make sure that everything is firing and it should also show up here as well. So as you can see, it, it knew that I scrolled down the page and um, that's how you just confirm that everything's working properly. So that's how you can track individual page views and different things like that on your website. So now let's get into how to actually understand and read the reporting. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want access to all the videos for free, all you have to do is sign up for my IG Growth Accelerator course and you will find all those videos in the bonus section as well as some branded templates, DM scripts, and a whole bunch of helpful resources that can help grow your business. With that said, thank you so much and I will catch you on the next one.